very fortunate to be working with something which really is quite a magical thing. It's amazing how it transforms itself. Glass was well, the only material I've ever worked with which you can't touch while you're working it. Everything else, stone, wood, you know, you're constantly touching, it's very tactile. But with the glass, you're touching it through other materials. And that might be the, the newspaper pad that I'm using, the blocks, the marva, jacks, the tweezers, whatever it might be, you're just a little bit away from it. And that, that's why I'm, I'm constantly looking for different things that I can put in my hand to sort of get close to the, close to the work. Waking up in the morning, coming into a glassworks. I mean, if we if we think about it, it's a hot, sweaty job. It's you know, it's not the most pleasant environment sometimes to work in. But I absolutely adore it. I mean, you're you're manipulating a material which is constantly changing. It's malleable. You can add to it, cut into it. It's fantastic. And I'm so fortunate to be in a position where I can do that. <laughs> I haven't had a, a traditional glass blowing kind of apprenticeship, so to speak, ever since I was very young I always enjoyed doing art and then I went up to Leicester to do a, a degree in sculpture, did teaching for six years both in the UK and in New Zealand and while I was in New Zealand I was still doing uh, figurative sculpture and then I turned some of these sculptures into glass by doing lost wax kiln casting. I came back to the UK and thought I'd carry on doing that, make, the, make my sculptures in glass. And I hired a little, little room next to I Like Glass. And I just watched the glass blowers and I thought, I'd like to work with the molten glass. Arrows and Barnes at that time wanted the glassworks and, and I basically set it all up. So I built, I built my glassworks and uh, sat, at, sat at the bench, got a bit of glass out and tried to make a bird. That was the first thing I tried to do. Uh, I'm, I'm always drawn to things that are much more sculptural than just things like, like a, a traditional vase. However, uh, occasionally I, I do like to try and do things like that as well, you know, so it's, it's, all, it's a whole range of different things I do. And what I, what I like to do is when people come into the glassworks, every visit they have, you know, if they come once a year, they'll see something new. They'll see a different piece, something that will surprise them, not you know, I mean, might in terms of colour, but especially in terms of form and you know, the sculptural pieces. So it's not always the same, the same things they're looking at. I mean, I'll always have the, the popular range, like the little robins. When you run a business, you have to have a whole range of different things, from the small bread and butter lines all the way up to the quite big sculptural pieces. To actually make a glass piece inside the furnace, the glass is always hot inside there. So the furnace is always on, we don't turn it off. We take a length of iron rod and then we roll the end of it into the glass, take it out, and then that blob we can shape it and then put more glass on top, go to the bench, pull that around a bit, back into the iron, back into the furnace put more glass on top of that and you can layer it up, build it up and things like the figures of vases we'll have multiple figures, so you have 13, 20 figures all added together. Once you've actually made a piece, finally, you need to make sure that the whole piece is the same temperature. So you can throw things together quite quickly but then you need to make sure it's all stabilised, it's all... It's, but essentially the glass thinks it's one piece of glass, it does, hasn't got one hot bit and one cold bit. You have to put it into another oven which is held at about 500 degrees, so half the temperature of the furnace. The furnace is about 1,070, and that's so that throughout the piece, from deep inside to the surface, it's all the same temperature. And then during the night, I'll cool the oven down. If you think about it, it's 50 times colder in my studio than it is in the, in the furnace. We're going from 1,000 degrees to room temperature. And one great analogy I like to use is it's a bit like being in a really hot bath and going into ice cold water. It's a bit of a shock. So for the glass, it's too much stress. And what we'd like to do is put it in an oven, a bit like tepid water, and then cool it down very, very gently, and it takes all the stress out, and that way the glass is happy. Thinking about making a piece of work, I've got 
loads and loads of ideas about what I want to do and sometimes the limitations of your skills stop you from realising those ideas and sometimes I've woken up in the middle of the night and thought oh right yes I've, I've sussed it out now I, I could do this or if I cut it like that or let it swing down and sweep it up and you slowly over months and years realise those ideas that, that have been mulling about in your head over a long period of time. We generally do a lot of glass sculpting and some glass blowing where I mean, recently we're doing these blown figure vases where we're actually blowing bubbles into a sculpture of figures which are all embracing each other, supporting each other and, and creating these quite unusual blown vessels. Worked very hard to 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 be where I am now, and uh, my family certainly in the early days made a lot of sacrifices, and we did it, the first few years were not easy. I, I've uh, I employ quite a few of my friends. Um, yeah, I think they I think they're very proud proud of what what's doing. My wife's just started working with me now, which is which is great because she's starting to actually get uh, more involved in the business. Now that the children are getting, I've got four children and now they, they're getting a little bit older. I've got Jake at university and you know, they're starting to, um, it, it's, it's really good. It's a good thing. In terms of um, developing my work and pushing that further, I've started now to have exhibitions of my work in, in London and uh, soon we're going to go to France which is very exciting. I've got some work now in, in galleries on the mainland as well. I'd say the, the figurative blown vases are, are my favourite at the moment because they're quite a, a struggle to, to get right. There's all sorts of things that can go wrong when you're, when you're making them. You're relying on lots of other people to make sure they're not getting it wrong as well. So for it all to come together at the end and, you know, and it's all worked, it's great. I love living on the Isle of Wight, it's a fantastic place to live. Um, Arras and Barnes is a great place to make glass. Glass really is quite a magical thing, you know, it transforms itself, but I absolutely adore it. Been struggling to make the figurative vase for a very long time and now I've made it I look at it and I'm so pleased with it it's so satisfying it's a great feeling of achievement